and Money Shop. You can count on us. Save $1.10 on Purdue Fresh Chicken Lake Quarters, only $1.79 per pound. For a great snack, red and black plums, just $2.99 a pound, saving $2. Four roll Charmin Ultra Soft or Strong Toilet Tissue, just $5.25. Hot price on select varieties of craft shredded cheese, only $3.59 for an 8 ounce bag. Save $2.56 on Halo Top Ice Cream, only $6.49 for a one pint tub. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more weekly specials. You can count You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Tuesday, the 17th of July. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us tonight. A mold issue at the hospital's pharmacy where medicines are prepared has raised concerns about health and safety. We have confirmed that at least one employee who worked at the facility has tested positive for mold infection after repeatedly developing respiratory illnesses. Gary Morena brings us the latest. The worker in question told us they repeatedly developed upper respiratory tract infections and tests at the Leahy Clinic revealed an allergic reaction to cladosporia mold, which was reportedly found in high concentrations in the air-conditioned ducts and vents in the pharmacy area located in the basement of the old hospital wing. The worker claimed to have developed asthma and said complaints about the problem were ignored. As a result, they were advised they should not continue working in the facility. Cladosporia mold is made up of more than one species of fungus. Most are not dangerous to humans, but long-term exposure can trigger allergies and asthma symptoms. The worker in question worked in the basement pharmacy for almost 10 years, and several colleagues are said to have also developed respiratory issues while working there. Meantime, it is alleged that over the Bermuda Heroes holiday last year, an air conditioning unit in the basement, quote, blew out, leaving the pharmacy covered in soot and dust. We are told the area was cleaned up and brought back into operation the next day. Staff we spoke with contend that was too short a time period and claim some of the medicines in the pharmacy had traces of soot and dust, raising concerns about possible contamination. But the BHB told us in June 2017, an air conditioner that fed air into the pharmacy department malfunctioned. Dirt was expelled when the air conditioner was restarted, and some staff experienced minor complaints and attended the BHB's employee health services department, while others went home. A deep clean or terminal clean was undertaken throughout the pharmacy that same day, and as a precaution, medicines within the exposed area were disposed of. Our source maintains tests of the area reveal there was a high concentration of cladosporia mold and that the BHB had been advised to relocate the pharmacy, but has not. Meanwhile, we've obtained copies of the certificates of mold analysis done by an accredited laboratory in Western Florida, ProLab. The documents show colonies of not only cladosporium, but also penicillium and chitomia mold, all of which can aggravate hay fever and asthma. Also discovered during the testing was what was described as non-sporulating fungi, which though is not known to have any allergy triggers. The BHB in response told us that as a healthcare provider, it takes concerns raised about air quality seriously. As each individual has a different level of sensitivity to dust and mold, we listen when any staff member raises concerns regarding air quality, even when air quality tests do not indicate an elevated risk to staff, as has been the case in the pharmacy department. Further, over the last 18 months, general improvements have been made within the pharmacy department area in the general wing of the King Edward Memorial Hospital, including air conditioning upgrades, improved flooring, the purchase of new furniture and a small number of staff relocations. There is currently no need to relocate this department entirely, the BHB states. Although, as we embark on completing a full estate master plan, which is in our annual plan for 2018-2019, we will be considering the best place for all services on all campuses at the BHB. Both the general wing of KEMH and MWI are older buildings with aging infrastructures, and the Bermuda environment itself is conducive for air quality issues. So we will continue to work on preventative and responsive actions to maintain our facilities. Now as for the ProLab report, the BHB says... 
it does not recognize it as a legitimate report. It stands by its statement and its air quality test that was overseen by expert local air quality specialists who concluded that the pharmacy was acceptable for normal work activities. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks for that, Gary. In other news, a Bermudian scientist is behind a bid to start a local service that would allow people to know the origins of their DNA and is hoping to use a revolutionary new technology, a tiny device that connects to any computer, allowing anyone to receive their results in real time. Tarai Trot has that story. DNA sequencing is the process of working out the order of the building blocks or bases in a strand of DNA. But the process of analyzing DNA can be tricky. It often requires samples to be sent to laboratories overseas, resulting in weeks of delay before... However, a British company, Oxford Nano... ...resulting in DNA analysis in real time. It's called the MinION, a small USB device that can make a world of a difference. Dr. Stephen Young, who is among a group of visiting scientists in Bermuda for a crucial conference on DNA, is with the company behind the technology. So this is an example of a, of a portable sequencer in my hand. This is our product, MinION. And um, it's a way to, to tap into all of the information in, in those living things. The key to the MinION device is its portability. And it's significant because what it's allowing is for anyone in the world, anywhere, in any environment, to uh, sequence anything they want. So there are, it's allowing people to do fundamental biomedical research, to, to look into human genetics and the basis of disease. Um, there are other applications that are to do with uh, protecting environments or monitoring environments, looking for harmful organisms in the water supply. Bermudian Dr. Karika Weldon helped to bring the conference to Bermuda. By day, she works full-time as a lecturer at De Montfort University in Leicester, England. It is her plan to introduce the technology to the Bermuda school system. So when we do our school tour in November, we will try to incorporate it somehow. We could be sequencing plants, or you could actually take a sample and actually find out what bacteria is in it by doing this. So we'll figure out how we'll do that. But first of all, we want to get the youth. Um, for the scientists that are already here, it can be used in the hospital for a diagnosis. That is a, a developing field. But ultimately, we want to be able to offer a service in Bermuda where people can actually know where they come from. So that is kind of long-term goals that we can um, look to in, in terms of using this technology. Dr. Weldon is keen to point out she personally uses the DNA device for her research. I've actually started an experiment in the lab, driven home with my laptop and the device, and finished the experiment at my house. For those wondering about the areas in which portable DNA testing can be used in Bermuda, consider this. So you may be familiar with things like sickle cell. Um, sickle cell testing is basically a genetic test. Um, and if you need it to know if you have it or not, you have to know the sequence of that gene. And so we already have a lot of tests that relies on genetics, um, but it would, what it would do, it would improve our healthcare system, in my opinion, if we were able to have this more regularly. And Dr. Weldon says the conference last weekend was another example of Bermuda punching above its weight on the world stage. So over the weekend we had 11 scientists that came from all over the world, from Australia, Canada, the UK, from Iceland and the US, and they were here to try and improve the technology that is the basis of the technology that they're using. And so what is really nice is that this links very nicely because it's in the same event, sorry, it's the same venue as the initial meeting that happened in 1996 where the Bermuda Principles was first written. We'll have more for you after this short break, including a new police warning against online fraud, plus all the latest weather news. Stay with us. You can count on us. Save more than half price on Seedless Red Grapes, only $2.99 per pound. Certified Angus Beef Top Sirloin Steak, just $8.99 per pound. Select varieties of Purex 2X Laundry Detergent, only $4.99 for a 50-ounce bottle. Select varieties of Arizona Drinks, just $7.99 for a 12-pack. Nestle's Cheerio Cereal, only $4.99 for a 397-gram box. All stores are open Monday through Saturday until 10 p.m. and Sunday 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping for me. Welcome to Bermuda Motors. We're proud to be celebrating over 50 years of being the island's leader in automotive sales. While we are known for selling some of Bermuda's premium auto brands, we are your single source for all your vehicle needs. From cars to bikes to commercial vehicles, 
We have it all at Bermuda Motors. Bermuda Motors is your single source for your automotive needs. To find out more, visit bermudamotors.bm or call us at 292-0893. Welcome back. Well, the Parliamentary Registry Office has responded to criticism from the OBA saying it did not issue any authorization to share voter contact information and there was no evidence of the infiltration of the voter database by anyone unauthorized. This follows comments at an OBA press conference yesterday in which senior party members said the PLP had been given access to voters' contact details before the 2017 election. The Parliamentary Registry said today it falls under the supervision of the governor who, it said, had responded directly to the OBA on the subject. A review found that the contact information was requested in 2012 and approved by the then registrar, but brought to her attention, the office said she took immediate steps to stop the move. And police have issued another warning over fake social media accounts with fraudsters pretending to be government officials, then demanding money. Tony Waterman has the details. In one recent example, a fake message alluded to the government offering grants. If the person was interested, all they had to do was send $700 to an undisclosed location via FedEx. In return, they would receive a $50,000 grant. There's been a string of fake social media accounts impersonating government officials. Lovita Fogo, the minister of the cabinet office, was subject of a fake account last year. Scammers pretend to be ministers, former ministers, and MPs. They contact people via private messaging and ask for money for government initiatives and proposals. It's unclear if last year's case and this case are linked. Police warn against divulging any personal information to these messages. Residents can verify if the message is from a member of parliament by calling the government at 295-5151. And if you have any information on the fraudulent media accounts, you can reach the police at 295-0011 or the Independent and Confidential Crime Stoppers Hotline at 800-8477. Tony Waterman for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Tony. In legal matters, an American cruise passenger was fined $1,300 for attempting to smuggle what she thought were ecstasy pills to Bermuda. 50-year-old Renee Rosengard from New York also admitted to importing cannabinoid oil, an illegal substance, and resisting a customs officer on July the 11th in Sands. She disembarked from the Norwegian escape when she was stopped and her cabin searched. An undisclosed number of pills were found, but Rosengard attempted to swallow them, a struggle with a customs officer ensued and she was arrested. Later analysis found the pills did not contain any ecstasy. She was fined and told to pay or face 20 days in jail. Turning to weather news, a warm front will bring in a few showers. Here are the details from AccuWeather headquarters. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer. Hopefully you've had a great Tuesday. We do have some showers in the forecast for tonight, and we also have a thunderstorm advisory that was just issued by the Bermuda Weather Service. And you can see on our radar here, last couple of hours, a lot of the action off to our west, but we've had a couple of uh, lightning strikes just to our south. So we could be looking at some unsettled weather as we get into the forecast for this evening. For right now, though, we're sitting in the upper 70s, humidity between 70 and 75 percent. Winds are coming in out of the southwest 5 to 10 knots and the wind should be coming out of the southwest the next couple of days and looks like the high pressure system, the Bermuda High, is going to be building back over the area. We just have to get through a few more shower opportunities. Again, that's tonight and also early on Wednesday. The water temperature has climbed up. We're now at 83 degrees and it's going to be pretty pleasant to be out on the water the next couple of days. Waves inside the reef around one foot.
And outside, we're looking at waves anywhere from 2 to 4 feet. So uh, pretty good conditions weather-wise. As far as marine alerts are concerned for tonight, as I mentioned, there is a thunderstorm advisory. So tonight, not the best of conditions, but it's smooth sailing into Wednesday and also into Thursday as well. Your tidal times right down here. We have low tide at 711 on your Tuesday and high tide coming in just after 115 on Wednesday morning. So overnight tonight, we'll get a couple of those spotty showers in the area. Can't rule out maybe a few rumbles of thunder. Otherwise, temperatures 76 degrees for tonight. We'll have a lot of clouds out there for this evening and we'll allow for a morning shower on Wednesday. After that, high pressure starts to build in. So we have some improvements as we get into the middle of the week here. 84 degrees for your high temperature, low of 77 and tomorrow afternoon should be nice and pleasant. As we take it here, a couple of days, we're going to continue to stay in that southwesterly flow. Uh, Bermuda High right over us right now. And around the periphery of the weather, showers, but to our west. So the next couple of days, we get to squeak out some sunny times and some nice weather before eventually we have more showers moving back into the area. Looks like that will be moving in later on this week. If you're doing some traveling, here's a look at the Gateway forecast. Toronto, clouds and sun, 76 degrees tomorrow, 86 in the Big Apple, much better than the stormy times they're dealing with right now. Boston, 81 degrees, sunny and pleasant. We have no tropical development, so just your typical showers and thunderstorms here in Jamaica, Barbados, and also into Trinidad. Temperatures in the upper 80s. Your extended forecast, morning shower on Wednesday, then we're pretty good to go here Wednesday and Thursday. We'll start to see the moisture getting back into the region late this week, so we do have some showers around as we approach the weekend. AccuWeather was presented by BF&M Insurance Group. It's hurricane season. Here are some tips from BF&M. Before a storm, make sure you have a family plan. Stock up on food and water and protect your home. Board up and make sure your insurance policies are up to date. After a storm, check everyone's safety, especially seniors. Inspect your property and secure from further damage. Then note the damages, list and take photos. Remember, you can always count on BFNM 24-7 during hurricane season and all year round. Attention neighbors, I just got a great night's sleep on my beauty rest mattress, so I am feeling refreshed, recharged, and ready to go. This means for the next 24 hours, I will be a coiled cobra of energy and enthusiasm, ready to strike. 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 That is all. Ready to strike. At Dreams, we don't just sell mattresses so you can get better sleep. We do it so you can be awake. Dreams, the mattress professionals. The second half of June and the first half of July, we are going to be very busy in the store. And I expect you all to be in your station while you are on duty. But Uncle George, being that this meeting is up early, can we watch the World Cup in the big screen? What World Cup? <coughs> There's a myriad of snacks out there, something special for everyone on match day, and you're likely to find them at Lindo's. Why go anyplace else? Surface Trends has been serving Bermuda for over 25 years, supplying and installing tile and natural stone. We have a large in stock selection of beautiful porcelain wood planking, including our exclusive Bermuda cedar tile. You will also find Bermuda's best in stock selection of countertops, including natural granites, exotic quartzites, and silestone engineered quartz in all the newest colors. Our team will be happy to help you. Stop by our showroom at 17 Serpentine Road or give us a call at 295-8005. Welcome back. A programming note now. Premier David Burt will give a special television address to the country later this week about his government's first year in office. We'll bring it to you in full on this channel and also on our sister channel, ZFB TV 7. The Premier's address will air on Thursday starting at approximately 6.40 p.m. In other news, four graduates from the Public Works Department's Skills and Development Program fly out to the U.K. tonight where they'll get further training to improve their skills. As Mike Sharp now reports for two of those taking part. It's an illustration of how they've managed to turn their lives around. Not that long ago, it seemed jail, not England, was their destination.
The Minister of Public Works, Colonel David Birch, highlighted the success of the four graduates. Shalay Johnson, Larik Lipewarm, Troy Watson, and Casey Green, who will be in the UK for three and a half weeks to improve in landscaping and the horticultural field. To remind, the skill, Skills Development Program girls are to equip young people with skills, knowledge and experience to assist in making them attractive for employment opportunities in both the public and private sectors. Supervisor and foreman Roger Paris explains why they were the best and it was an honor to turn a few lives around. These two here, their life changed. One of them's foot was almost in the door of prison. The other one was heading that way. I can say, hands down, that if I had to pick the first four back best workers, they're right there. Casey Green admitted he had a short temper before the program. This program right here for the skills development program has helped me improve a lot on my personality and just my mind, my mindset. I'm seeing life from a different perspective now. Deans, when I was younger, hot-headed, I dressed off at anybody real quick. Now I'm humbled down a lot and I'm seeing things that are in the long term, that could help me take me a long way in life. Troy Watson is also glad he deviated from the road he was traveling. I know that I started off on a bad path, but in this program, Mr. Pass and Mr. Santushi, they showed me the way of how, of how the real life of reality is, and I'm thankful for them for helping me change my life around, and I'm thank you for this trip. Lightborn already knew he had a green thumb. This program has also helped me further my dreams because before I started doing the program I was also in a garden for 11 months and I used to sell vegetables on Primetta Road on Saturdays if you've seen that before but I used to be into that until Mr. Paris seen me on the side and picked me up but I just like to say that I am very appreciative of all the opportunities that he's given me and or the sponsors as well. Thank you. The lone female of the group, Shalay Johnson, has no problem getting her hands dirty. In fact, she says the program has given her the chance to show her musical and painting talents. I learned a lot in the skills development program. Um, I learned to read, I learned to use the machinery. I have even was able to expose some of my gifts and share with the community, and I appreciate that. And also, I would like to say thank you to the Garden Club. And on behalf of the Skills Development Program, I have an art piece that I would like to give you. I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Good stuff. Well, still to come, World Based, and we'll have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. The Marketplace Food Court is you and your family's one stop shop. Start your day at the breakfast bar with omelets made to order and traditional Bermuda codfish breakfast. The chefs will cook lunch and dinner to your liking. Along with the salad bar, sandwich bar, sushi bar, and fruit bar, the Marketplace Food Court is your kitchen away from home. Every day is hassle-free with nutritious meals from the Marketplace Food Court. Visit us seven days a week. Homemade cooking, quality service, all at prices you can count on. From happy beginnings and life choices that we make along the way. Colonial protects your lifestyle with the best insurance cover at the best possible price. Health insurance with far-reaching benefits. Family protection and long-term financial plans. Business insurance and generous employee benefits. For happy beginnings to happy ever after, visit cgigroup.com. Colonial, where people come first.
And some customers watching this program on standard definition cable vision may be experiencing some vision problems. Cable vision say they hope to solve the problem shortly. Now here's Earl Bazin with tonight's sports reporting to us from Colombia. We're here in Colombia as the CAC games are about to get underway. Joining me here is the assistant chef de mission, Mr. Craig Brown. Craig, we're only days away from the start of the CAC games right here in Colombia. How are things shaping up for Bermuda team? Well, uh, firstly, uh, welcome to Colombia. Uh, things in Barranquilla are starting to take shape. The village is putting the final preparation to accept over 5,000 athletes, including our athletes from Bermuda. So we've got things coming together and we're expecting uh, 23 athletes over nine sports across three different cities. So things are looking good. We're hoping for some very good performances over the next three or four weeks. Now we've seen the arrival of one sailor thus far. Um, how is he settling in and, and getting ready for preparation come uh, first day of event? Uh, yes, we, are, we have, uh, received Ben Smith yesterday and uh, late last evening after a flight delay. However, Ben is just resting at the moment and then later on we'll be taking him out to the sailing venue and he'll start to do preparation to get his boat. Hopefully, Ben said he wants to be out in the water later today, so uh, fingers crossed everything will come off for that. The much-anticipated Eastern County Cup competition will get underway this coming Saturday at the Seabreeze Oval, where the defending champions, Bailey's Bay, will take on Cleveland County. Digicel have come on with a three-year sponsorship, something Edward Lamb, part of the Eastern County Committee, thanked them for. I think what did, and I'm not here to speak on behalf of anybody else, but I, what impressed me mostly was that Digicel cottoned on to the idea that, bro, this, this is something special when they first came on board. And, and I think that's what has been the impetus for them to continue their sponsorship. Again, for which we're very grateful. But Eastern Connors is, a, a, as I said, a special event to thousands of people. Our tentacles reach all, not just in the Eastern parishes, our tentacles reach all across the island as people have migrated from God's country to the, the rest of the Bermuda. Um, and so, <laughs> and so, by God's country, I mean all four counties. <laughs> Take it easy. Um, but it, it really is, Dennis, man. It speaks to how, how closely knit we really are, uh, uh, even though we're fierce competitors. And, you know, sometimes it gets, it gets pretty hairy on the field and off the field. But beside all that, we, we still are very closely intertwined and connected. And that's what we really celebrate. All Leverot's Vancouver Knights were crowned the inaugural Global 2020 Canada Cricket Champions. Unfortunate circumstances resulted in Daniel Phillips bowing out of the fourth and final tournament he was competing in on the Junior Caribbean Tennis Circuit. Phillips was competing in Santo Domingo in the Copa Murga 2018 Boys Under 14 Tournament. Phillips was taking on Emmanuel Munez from Dominican Republic. Munez won the first set 6-2, but Daniels would fight back and win the second set 7-5. Phillips was leading the third and final set 1-0 when the heavens opened, stopping the match. Phillips and his coach Sam Mabry left the grounds looking to pick up a few items, but when they returned, the officials had defaulted Phillips as he was not back at the grounds to resume his match. With multiple goals from Bobby Walker, who scored four times, Armad Wilson, who added a hat-trick, and Drew Jenkins scored twice, Bermuda Cruz to a 17-2 win over Luxembourg in World Lacrosse Championship action in Israel. 73 runs crossed the plate during a doubleheader as the Bermuda Commercial Summer League softball season resumed at the Michael Cree Softball Diamond last evening. 50 runs alone were scored in the first game as Deloitte went down 28-22 to the Ragamuffins and then the Angels defeated the PHC Zebras 19-4. There was a Bermuda inline ball hockey doubleheader at the PCC Hockey Rink that had plenty of excitement with the two games producing 20 goals. In the opener, the Southampton Sailors would go down 3-2 to the Tuckerstown Tropics. Christopher Merritt would lead the Tuckerstown Tropics to victory with two goals, with Ryan Wilson adding the other. Tony Jackson and Chris Grantier scored a goal each for the Southampton Sailors. The nightcap would need 
overtime to decide a winner as the St. David's Islanders edged the Warwick Waves 8-7. Jeremy Estee would lead the St. David's Islanders with four goals. His fourth was the winner in overtime. Pete Brodsky added two goals. Matthew Engelman and Jeffrey Engelman added a goal each for the Islanders. Josh Bush would score twice for the Warwick Waves with Mark Heitzman, Ryan White, Sean McKee, Ian Bowden, and Matthew Benson all adding a goal each. Trot and his West Ham United under-23 teammates will this season face reigning champions FC Porto in the group stages of their Premier League International Cup campaign. The Portuguese Giants, who were crowned tournament winners for the second consecutive season, when they defeated Arsenal in the final in May, will travel to London to face West Ham United in Group A. I'm Earl Baston with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports in Colombia. Thanks, Earl. Well, that's all from us for the moment. I'm Diane Brewer. Please join us at the same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening.